Okay, lesson 3-5, proving lines parallel. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to really do proofs. We're just going to work on uh, understanding parallel lines based on the opposite of what we learned earlier in 3-2, when lines are parallel. So basically, they're the same lesson. Um, so what we're going to do is look well, and say, okay, if corresponding angles are congruent, so example one and three. If those are congruent, then what do we know? We know lines A and B are parallel. So that's proven they're parallel, but it's opposite of what we learned before. We learned earlier if they were parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So basically it's the same thing. Um, same is true for alternate exterior, consecutive interior. Remember, four and five, those have to equal 180. They have to be supplementary. So if they equal 180, then that means lines P and Q would be parallel. Um, the other one that we learned at the end were alternate interior. So six and eight, if they're equal, then the lines are parallel. So all this is basically 3.2 done completely over. What we're gonna do is look at its application. So let's look at some problems here. It says determine which lines, if any, are parallel and tell why. We're not going to state specific postulates or theorem. We're just going to look at them. So it says one and three. So one of the things I've learned to do is when I'm doing a problem is sometimes I try to uh, look at how to get it down to simplify the picture where I'm just looking at uh, one and three. So in this case, I'm going to cover all this up. I don't need any of that. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could cover up four and five and six and two and just look at one and three. Now I can do that with the iPad and it's a little bit harder for you guys. But if I look at one and three now and look at their location, those are corresponding so if corresponding angles are equal, it helps me too. I can tell immediately which two lines are parallel. J and K are parallel. Why? Because they're corresponding angles. Okay, let's do another one. Let's erase this. Let's do number two, angles two and five. So again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cover up everything that does not involve two and five. So all this... And I can cover up four, one, three, six. So if I look at two and five now in the picture, those are alternate interior. And if they're equal, then J and K are parallel. Okay, let's do one more. So again, I'm going to erase all this stuff. Let's go to problem number four. Let's do numbers or angles six and eight. So again... I'm going to cover up everything that doesn't involve 6 and 8. So, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Okay, now 6 and 8, we look at them. Where are they located? Those are consecutive interior. They have to be equal to 180. So what two lines are parallel? L and M. So hopefully covering some of that stuff up helps you see it. All right, number 5. This is more of an application. So... It says find X so that they would be parallel. So if these are going to be parallel, then these angles are alternate exterior. They're both on the outside on opposite sides. So what's true about those? Those have to be equal. So we're doing the problems exactly the same way we did in lesson 3.2. So we're setting those equal, and then we're just solving. Subtract 2X from both sides. So I get 2X minus 23 equals 17. Add 23. I know I'm writing over some words, but hopefully you can see that. So that gives me 2x is 40. Divide by 2, and we get x is 20. And that's all we're really doing with this. We are not going to be doing a problem like number 6. We're going to skip that.